Okay, gentlemen, we are on. Let's hear what's on the field. And welcome back to the commentary box. We have Electric Monkey Overlords versus Le Legiva Romana, and I've just totally spooned the name of the lines, but I'm going to continue anyway. Um, I've been practicing for ages, but, you know, I screwed it up. Big deal. Um, anyway, we have on the field for... Electric Monkey Overlords, a Loki, two Proteus, a Damnation, a Vindicator, and a Neros, and an Ares. I'm so glad I have pulled Legini Romana, and they have on the field three Dominixes, a Crewer, uh, two Healers, a Saber, uh, two more Crewers, and a Tyrannus. Yeah, interesting. First use of the healer we've seen this time around. First Vindicator on the field as well, um, so it's going to be interesting to see how all these ships play off against each other. Also, the first use of a Triple Dominic setup, which is always, usually generally very powerful. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what they do with them. My bet is that it's going to be a big, horrible mess of cap and armor transfer. <laughs> We're underway. Yep, straight away we have um, Electric Monkey Overlords deploying a hell of a lot of Sentry Drones and Hammerhead 2s. And a lot of drones actually from the Guinea Ramona as well. Uh, yep. Looks like uh, Sentry, Sentry Drones. And both of the Gila's uh, for Laguna and Romana have actually been tackled. Uh, we've just seen the notifications pop up on our screens. So they're, both, uh, they're both tackled as is their Aneros. Actually, one of them just blew up. Oh dear. And we have the Electric Monkey Overlord to... Whoa, where'd that go? Proteus and about... With about 25% shields left. Actually, down to about 10. At the same time, their Vindicator uh, is into armor. Yeah, but it looks as if they've uh, switched damage from that Proteus to the Vindicator. Probably fearing the amount of DPS that it can put out. Um, the, um... The Vindicator, of course, famed now since the, the recent changes for its 1400 DPS loadouts. And on the, the Guinea Romania side, we have, uh, it looks like their primary, their target, they're targeting a one of the Dominixes, which is about almost 50% armor. Um, while they continue to think away at, oh, it looks like an Ares in structure on the uh, Electric Monkey Overlord side with the. Uh, where to go, the Vindicator hitting, uh, ooh, about 25% armor left. But, uh, Lagina Romania, one of their Dominics is, is starting to drop fairly fast. 10% armor left. Sliver of structure, it'll be done in a second. Yep, and that Vindicator perilously close to the edge there for Electric Monkey Overlords. Um, it's interesting to see yet another team fielding the Saber as a tackler. Um, little fast destroyer hull primarily used as a 0-0 interdictor. Um, and there we go, we lose a Dominix. We have lost a Dominix for the Romanians, um, as well as the Vindicator for, um, for the Electric Monkey Overlords. And the second Dominix now is the target um, from the Guinea Romania, Romana. While on the uh, Electric Monkey Overlord side, it looks like a Proteus is starting to take some armor damage. Oh, no. It's like they're bouncing back and forth between the Proteus and the Loki, actually. Neither one of them has any shields left. Yeah, the Loki was being supported quite heavily there, but um, it looks as if um, they've switched targets now and they're working on that Proteus again, um, probably because they've been unable to uh, to crack the Loki. Um, actually, both ships now gain taken damage. It looks as if they're splitting the damage between the two. And as they do that, their, uh, one of their two remaining Dominixes hits up. Uh, 50% armor, so just to recap, on the uh, Electric Monkey Overlord side, we're left with a Loki, two Proteus, and a Damnation. And on the R R Guinea Romana side, we have a Domin two Dominix, a Tyrannus, two Crewer, three Crewer, Saber, and a Gila. With the uh, Tyrannus about to drop. Yep, and it's, uh, it's actually interesting to see. Um, it looks as if um, Electric Monkey Overlords... Um without that 1400 DPS, um, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll take them, and um, we'll see how it goes, but um, you can see there the two Tech 3 cruisers from um, from Electric Monkey Overlords, uh, deep in the water. Yeah, that's not, uh, it's not looking good. We have, uh, the, the Loki is at about 25% armor, the, the Proteus is about 50. Um, and it looks like they're just... 
thinking away at the uh, crewers on the uh, Lagina Romano side. The crewer, of course, the uh, Blood Raider frigate, um, which gets some uh, quite nice uh, small energy turret damage bonuses. I believe it gets a 100% bonus to small energy turret, so it makes it a very capable anti frigate platform. Also, gets a hell of a lot of bonuses to its energy vampire and neutralizer. Uh, um, mounts, so it's it's very good as a little support ship, but unfortunately, um, I believe they are now both dead. Yes, as is a Loki on the uh, Electric Monkey Overlord side, um, leaving only a pro two Proteus and a Damnation for Electric Monkey Overlords to two Dominics as a Saber and a Hela. Um, with the Proteus at about, ooh, that, uh, whatever that was, it's dead. <laughs> the Proteus is about 25% armor. Um, and the Dominix looks like it's, it's holding its tank just fine. Yeah, but I do believe these two Dommies will survive the match. I don't think that, um, that, um, Electric Monkey Overlords have the DPS to break that. Um, got a lot of, uh, Creator 2s, um, from the Romanians on the field. Um, fielded by their Dominixes, of course, T2, uh, Sentry Drones. So, um, there's a lot of DPS coming from those. Um, and it looks as if it's just a matter of time before they wear down the Electric Monkey Overlords team. Yeah, as you say, that the, one of their Proteus uh, drops, leaving them with just a Proteus and a Damnation left on the field. Um, to two Dominixes and a Gila on the uh, Lagini Romana side. Um, I, I, they're not going to have the DPS to break those Dommies. Um, so I imagine what we'll see now is the Proteus just kind of get plinked down and then they'll dump on the uh, Damnation. Yep, and I'm, I'm actually happy that one of these healers has survived because I really like those ships and I didn't want to see them both die. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I seriously don't think that um, that they're going to break those two dummies. Um, we are probably going to find that it might take a while to chew through that damnation, I should imagine. Yeah, and it looks like they're splitting their fire right now too between the, the damnation and the Proteus, which doesn't help. Well, it looks as if they'll hold the field. Um, I shouldn't imagine that um, that they see uh, those two guys as a threat now. So they'll probably just split the damage and they'll they'll sit and loot and make us ramble on about random things again. Which is always, of course, the, the most interesting part of your tournament commentary, as the Proteus hits about fifty percent armor. Yep. Hopefully, they might have heard us and they might be trying to get it over with as fast as possible. Um, We'll see how it goes. The Proteus uh, slowly losing his armor there, but um, not really much else going on. Yeah, it looks like they've switched the... Um, they had their fire split between the Damnation and the Proteus, and it looks like they've switched it completely back onto the Proteus now. And it's actually started dropping faster. Yeah, we can see there the, the full force of those T2 Sentry Drones uh, coming down on that Proteus now. Um, hopefully he'll be dispatched soon, and we can see just how hard this Damnation's actually tanked. I can't wait. The, the, the Dami's still taking that. Uh, somebody's still trying. That Dami still takes a little bit of armor damage every once in a while. Yeah, I think it's pretty much a lost cause now. We can see their uh, Red Rage 88. Um, of them Electric Mummy Overlords diving into structure now. It's not going to be long uh, before he's down and out. The Prodi has, of course, been a Galanti hole, having a ridiculous amount of uh, structure hit points. Probably damage controlled, so it may take a little longer. Oh, and there he goes. <laughs> proved wrong. And with their Dominix, one of their Dominix is at 50% armor, the other Dominix completely wrapped up, and their Gila at full strength, they start to plink away at the, the Electric Monkey Overlord's uh, damnation. And we're looking at about a 10% armor damage taken. Yep, it's going to be difficult to chew through that damnation, I should imagine. There's a lot of DPS coming out of those two dummies um, in the form of their T2 sentries. Um, but um, it's just going to be one of those things where we have to sit and wait. Um, it's interesting to see the damnation being fielded, actually. Um, it's been popular in past tournaments, but we haven't really seen much of it so far this time around. Um, it's very effective when you field um, an armor tank and um, set up, so um, I'm surprised... Uh, there hasn't been very many of them. I think we'll see more of them as the tournament wears on, but um, it was a, actually a really good uh, concept to, flee, to feel them with uh, two Proteus, but obviously uh, for Electric Monkey Overlords, it really uh, hasn't paid off this time around. Well, that's one of the things about the Damnation is the giant armor tank, but uh, 
I mean, really, once you once you get through the armor tank, it's like bada bing, bada boom, and then it just goes poof. Absolutely, it's just uh, it, it is just one of those things. It's a matter of wearing it down. But these things can end up with you know three, four hundred thousand effective hit points when you take armor resistances into account. So it's they're generally very, very heavily tanked. They may not actually be able to break the tank on this damnation. I'm actually probably going to go with you on that one. Um, it looks as if it's holding out at about 90, 85, 90% armor, uh, so we might see it a bit more uh, problematic to get through it. Hmm. The, uh, interestingly enough, also the Dami has not bothered to wrap up the sliver of the 50% armor damage that it's taken. Um, and that damnation is just going to sit there like a brick, I believe. Uh, and yeah, the damnation. The Damnation pilot's actually running away. Um, he's headed off across the arena, um, out of the main area where the fight was taking place, and he's sort of like ambling across towards the uh, the edge of the arena um, with a Gila um, and a Dominix in a pretty uh, distant chase. Oh. Maybe he uh, he took some lessons from the um, uh, was it a Daredevil pilot in the last? In the last match, orbiting lessons. You can see there the damnation pilot is actually heading off across the arena. Um, the Gila is chasing him down with a pack of Berserker 2 heavy drones, and he's actually trying to kill them with hams, uh, with heavy assault missiles. That is. So, um, yeah, this may take a while. He's uh, he's still putting up a hell of a fight. I think you'd be surprised how many people in history have actually died from ham. Probably quite a few, I should imagine it can be a very, very vicious food. Well, especially if not prepared properly. There was once a time when we couldn't, uh, we didn't have the, the hygiene standards that we have today. Absolutely, and uh, not being very well after, um, after a, a bad case of harm would definitely be a problem. It would certainly impede your ability to fight in an internet spaceship tournament. Well, I, I certainly wouldn't be happy about it. I would be very displeased if I had to, to commentate with an upset stomach because of a ham mishap. We have about three and a half minutes left. Um, that Gila is, is uh, still chasing the damnation. Um, trying to be the little Gila that could with his three berserkers and his ham. Um, but he's not going to break the tank of that damnation. So if he stays out of range, we're going to run the time down. Yeah, but it actually looks to me, in all honesty, like this damnation pilot is... Uh is making an attempt to kite the Gila um, out on his own. Um, and if he gets close enough, he might give him, you know, a good hide and we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. But it looks as if the, um, the Gila pilot's actually just keeping his distance, trying to stay out of harm range. Oh, he's shooting drones. He's shooting the Berserkers. Yeah, but it uh, looks like the, uh, the Gila's actually making a run for it now. He's, uh, he's opening up the distance a little bit more. The, uh, who did you think was going to win this particular match for him? Um, my money was actually on the Romanians, so I'm pretty happy about it. Um, generally, I mean, we have corporations in EVE, such as, um, I'll, you know, I'll name drop Romania Renegades, um, who are very good at PvP and they release some excellent videos. Um, and I think that, uh, generally, um, I, I was for the Romanians. When I saw the setup, I was um, I was in two minds because the T3 can be very strong, um, but three Dominics is, is, is very difficult to crack when the pilots are skilled. Are the Romanians actually Romanian? I'm not actually sure. Um, it would be nice to get con some confirmation whether they are or not, but um, there are only two nationalities of PvPers that I actually consider to be the best in EVE, and I've flown with them both, and those are Romanians and the Danish. For some reason, a hell of a lot of good PvPers um, come from either Romania or Denmark. I don't know why that is. That is interesting. One of the most interesting things I always I always found about EVE was the... Um, of course, it probably has a lot to do with time zones as well as language barriers, but the, the, the separation by nationality um, and the strong, the strong national ties you'll see with nationality-based corps, you know. And, 
going back a, a couple years ago when you had Red Alliance as, as one of the only Russian alliances um, at the time. And of course, they splintered off uh, after that. But there was always just a that dichotomy was always something that interested me. Yeah, I've got to agree. When when Red Alliance were around, really in force. Um... This scared the crap out of me, to be honest. They were a very, very strong military force, and, they've, and it got to the point where they were worn down to where they only owned one system, and they came back from it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when you have a corporation that's founded uh, on nationality, then it's a lot stronger, a lot more heavily bonded, I think, um, generally, than a, a corporation that's multinational. And that's the match. Uh, the, the Guinea Romana will take it from uh, the Electric Monkey Overlords, and we'll hand it back over to stop, um, CCP Soundwave. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Uh, that was an interesting match, um, maybe with a few more minutes than it should have taken, but we have two more matches on the schedule, Alexis Matari uh, versus V3, uh, Vanni Vidovici, uh, then Erebus Alliance versus one of the 0.0 big boys, uh, Red Overlord. But let's qu take a quick break. <laughs> 